What's up? Welcome back, guys, to Football Digest Daily. My name is Josh, of course, Kamaka. I'm sure you know that by now. Of course, I'll always keep reminding you to subscribe to our channel and to like this video. I see guys are liking uh, much of our content we've been doing lately. All right. So I'm here to talk about the Arsenal, the people's team uh, that was in action a couple of minutes ago. We just beat Aston Villa 2-0. Of course, there were some ghosts about Villa that we were, were haunting our asses. We needed to shed them off and exorcise them. And that's exactly what we have done. We have seen the Villas at their own backyard. In their first game of the season, they could not even get a goal. We went there, scored two goals and kept a goddamn clean sheet. Uh, Una Emery taking an L in the bag. Well, Ateta takes the W, all right? But I need to point out a few things here. I need to point out a few things. David Raya, oh my God. Yo, like if you ever had any doubts of just how good David Raya is, I feel like the first two games have shown you how good he is, right? The first game against Wolves, there's that save he produced against Larson in the first half. Point blank header, and he saved it. That guy is good. And there are some other saves he made in the second half. In this game, again, against Aston Villa, there was the there was the header by Oli Watkins. There was a shot on Anna Took, deflected off Gabriel Magalhaes, hit the crossbar, fell back to Watkins, who headed it wide. Who headed it towards David Raya, sorry. And David Raya, of course, just stretched his hand and saved it. I was like, David goddamn Raya. That guy is just something else, man. Oh my days. He's, he's, he's honestly really, really good. We are so blessed to have such a guy. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. I feel like he produced another save in that game. I just can't recall which which one was it. Which one was it? David Raya has produced, I think, like two saves in that game. I recall the Oli Watkins one. There was also another chance Oli Watkins had, by the way, which he squandered. Yeah, there was a chance he had one on one with the goalkeeper and just blew it wide. And for that one, in such instances, someone like Oli Watkins, honestly, you expect him to put it in the back of the net. So, yeah, I mean, a game of fine matches, of course. Uh, when two teams meet, of course, it's going to be a game of few chances. Uh, so when you get your chances, you better capitalize them. And that's why Oli should have capitalized those few chances he got. Because if he scores those goals, then you're talking to do like 2-0 now to Aston Villa. And that's something else altogether. So the only team that beat, uh, has beaten Arsenal this year, Aston Villa in the league, uh, has now lost. And the team that beat Arsenal home and away last season, the only team to do that, has lost to Arsenal. So I feel like you have totally exercise those villain uh, ghosts, to be honest. Um, Bukayo Saka was definitely a thorn in their flesh. Even when we, even the first chance that we got in that game, of course, he uh, forced Emi Martinez to produce a fantastic save just by the tip of his fingers, bruv. And of course, that, that ball went a bit wide. And of course, we got the corner kick out of that respect. But David Raya, I mean, Bukayo Saka, a thorn, man. Bukayo Saka is really good. I honestly see him, I know, again, too early, but I see him being the PFA player of the year this season, ain't gonna lie. 24 25. Bukayo Saka is gonna be the PFA player of the year, I kid you not. Um, he, uh, the first goal was by Trossard, Landro Trossard, who came out for Martinelli. Again, Martinelli, man. And Martinelli, I don't know, it's just making his case really hard to support, you know? Like, Trossard came on in the first piece of action, it's a goal from him. Martinelli just running at people, he's not making clinical passes in the final third. The crosses are not that good either. I mean, you can only hope he's going to gain some form as the season progresses. But so far, it's not looking good, man. So far, in fact, I feel like against Brighton, most likely, Trossard will start ahead of him. No lie. So, Trossard, I mean, came on. He absolutely boasted. Uh, like the Bossard, yes. Trossard, Bossard. Uh, scored the first goal. Fantastic finish, by the way. Carl it in the bottom of the, of the net. An assist by Gesu Bukayo Saka. Yeah, and then the second goal was uh, by Thomas Party, assisted by guess who again? Bukayo Saka. So Saka has like three assists so far in the league. Uh, it's just fantastic, man. The thing he's doing is just fantastic to watch. I know there are some th there are some few howlers we had in that match. There was a time Gabriel Magalhaes was caught on the ball by Rogers. Rogers was definitely a pain in our flesh. Ain't gonna lie, that dude is good. There's a time he was turning us around like goddamn pancakes. Ain't gonna lie. He turned Thomas Party around at once. He turned Declan Rice. Another chance, another time. So yeah, he's he's definitely one to watch out for for Aston Villa. He's he's quite good, honestly. Uh, Oli Watkins could not finish the game. I think he's not fully sharp in terms of match sharpness. I don't think he's fully got it because a sharp Watkins definitely punishes Arsenal when he gets those two chances and he do not do that. So thank you, Oli. We know you're an Arsenal fan. You know you're a Ghana by heart. So thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean Arsenal won the game. Kai Havertz was our striker again. 
Uh, there's a chance he got the first half felt he could have done better, but it is what it is. Um, I saw I saw him tracking back. I think in the second half to win the ball. That you got to love to see that. Honestly, you got to love to see that. He did the job today. He's a workhorse. We know that for sure. Um, Gabriel Jesus got a growing issue, which kind of makes me feel some type of way about this guy. Uh, we are like two games in, and he already has a growing problem. I that's not the kind of striker we want, man. I ain't gonna lie. We're not looking for such guys. No. Uh, so yeah, I mean it was good. I mean we have laid out a masterclass on how to beat Aston Villa. I don't expect moving forward teams to go and get beat at Villa Park. We have laid out the benchmark a masterclass on how to beat it. If you are there, you should have been getting yourself a pen and a paper, on, and you know how to beat Aston Villa. Just like how this coming weekend we're gonna show Manchester United how to beat Brighton. So I expect all Manchester United fans to come along with a pen and a paper and take notes on how to beat Brighton because you're going to lay out another masterclass. Trust me, we don't get tired of laying out these masterclasses. We just hope you guys take lessons. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's been a fantastic outing for the Arsenal. We definitely wanted to beat Aston Villa. We do not want them being back in this talk of title contention. We just want to be two teams in that contention talks. We just want to be us and Manchester City, which makes me feel like, again, like moving forward, which team do you think will beat Arsenal? Because I can't see the team beating Arsenal. Honestly, and I know when I say this, people are ah, you're being cocky and shit. Oh, da 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 this, yeah, da 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 da. No, 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 I'm not being cocky. Like, honestly, which team do you think will beat Arsenal? And I know it could say, oh, okay, last season nobody would have thought you'd lose to Fulham, but okay, uh, just like ah, last year nobody would have thought nobody would have thought you'd lose to West Ham, but we have a very different breed right now. Honestly, we have a very different animal, I ain't gonna lie. You know, Aston Villa went to West Ham last weekend and won there 2 1. This is their first game at home. They could not even score a goal. So, I mean, Arsenal, we are very different right now. We are a good team. And then there's this last-ditch tackle that Saliba produced against. Who was it? Was it against Duran? Or who was it against? It's just, just the way you love to see it. Just like how he did last season against... I don't know if you guys recall the last-ditch tackle he made against Andre. No, Jordan Ayu at the last pack. Bro, you love to see it. Because that guy was going one-on-one. -on -one. No, it was Jacob Ramsey, sorry. It was Jacob Ramsey. He was going to be one-on-one -on -one with um, David Dreyer. And Saliba was like, no, 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 no. Hold my beer. Not today, Jacob. Not today. So, man, I mean, Saliba again. I don't think I can talk enough about Saliba. You know that. You know that. So, it's been an outing uh, to, to uphold and to look forward to and to cherish for the Arsenal. We have totally had a good time at Villa Park. We hope to go back there again soon. <laughs> of course, you're not going to be going back there again, but we can't wait to welcome them at the Emirates. So, man, I'm excited. Let the weekend begin. Uh, just, just wait and see what's going to happen tomorrow as we do F1. Uh, since come out of Mercedes, we shall be looking forward to that. So, yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, I hope you, you had a good Saturday, sorry. And uh, we're going to enjoy that tomorrow as we watch Chelsea go up against Wolves and Liverpool play against Brentford. Adios. 10,000 subscribers.